Hi, I'm Ryan Quigley. I am 23. I'll be 24 next month. And today is it's the 25th? No, October 26th, 2020. A whopping 6.05, and uh, it's, it's dropping by the second. So jump on, help me out. I'm pretty sure it's a photo that I posted with my girlfriend for our anniversary, our six year anniversary. One of her cousins got married and we're all gussied up. I think that's the number of the, the, the biggest boy there. But again, I'm not a big Instagram poster. So I'm, this is a boring section for, for all the listeners out there. Logan, one of the, the three amigos, the, the three head honchos, him and I shared a manager for statistically at least most of our lives, I believe. We were both members of Connecting Talent Company. When he gets big and famous, I'm gonna tell people, yeah, we grew up together. Even though that's not really the case, but that, that's, that's, that's really how. And then, you know, I did a short film with his dad at some point. We used to host this thing together, the Starlight Spring Sing, where kids would come sing and stuff. And then, you know, we kind of just became friends over the many years of being child actors <laughs> together. We'd do stuff here and there. We would hang out and make movies and crack jokes. And here we are, kind of fell into it. From like the most cynical standpoint possible, it is an investment, isn't it? Like, of course, it's fun. You get to create art, surround yourself with people who are talented and like-minded and stuff. And that's cool. But at the, at the most basic sociopath, serial killer level, you're surrounding yourself with people who you hope are more talented than you in hopes that, you know, together the sum, the, 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 what is it? The sum will be greater than the whole of parts with parts, some whole, something of that nature. I think that's what we're doing here. And it's just, you know, it's good. It's good people. It's good people. It's, it's, it's fun to, fun to do some stuff that we're doing. Check it out. It's funny stuff. My favorite memory with Black Wolves has to be the entire experience of shooting the spotlight proof of concept. I was in it with Ephraim Bernie and we kind of rode up together and we, we shot this scene. And I think he talked about this in his, inter his interview. And I'm sorry if this is just a redo and people know what happened, but neither of us smoke weed. We both have very weak lungs, him and I. We're like delicate flowers and we had to like, smoke fake things like fake cigarette stuff in a bong and we had no idea what we were doing and at some point there was a mouse and then <laughs> it was it was crazy and it was funny and it was a lot of fun it was a good scene that we did that day i was laughing cracking up the whole time it was a hoot and a half if you will it's between two so i'm going to give you two one i was in a national commercial for at&t my, I don't know if it was my sophomore year of high school, whatever, but I was just like over my friend's house one night. We were just hanging out, drinking beers, like little degenerates. And we were watching a Dodgers game. We had like free LA TV, whatever. We were watching the Dodgers game. The commercial came on and it was the first time anyone had ever seen it on TV. My friend just started beating the shit out of me. He was just beating me up uh, as I, as you know, I was on TV. He was like, look, hey, you missed it. Whatever sh shtick I was doing on TV. It's either that or like a smaller one that's like more recent. And this is kind of lame maybe, but in February, a short film that Ephraim Bernie, I, don't know, I mentioned him before, he's like my husband, I called a quick little powwow. It was in a festival, it was a small little thing. And it was like, a, I think like 50 or 60 people in the audience and it was sold out. And him and I didn't even have seats and we had to, we kind of got shoved into a corner. Yeah, it was just cool watching, uh, hearing people enjoy something that we made together. And that was probably most fulfilling to me, even though nobody probably cared that much about it. But it's fun, you know, hearing people laugh at jokes you wrote and stuff. Again, like serial killers answer, <laughs> but like m making money is like, like the micro specific answer, isn't it? Like I, I wanna make a lot of, I wanna make as much money as possible. But the reason for that is because I would like to move out and, you know, get closer to the city, closer to people that I can collaborate with, start doing more stand-up and stuff so that my life is easier. 
and I can kind of start building my career and life more efficiently instead of you know doing what I am right now. I live in Rockaway, which is like a it's like a fucking hodge out of the city, and you know. So yeah, making money, doing stuff to do that, I guess. Of late, I really dug Whiplash. Whiplash really moved me. Even more recent, Jojo Rabbit, kick-ass piece of cinema, really beautiful stuff. But growing up as a kid, like the most important movie in my life, like my remote drop movie, like it's on TV, I stop everything, I watch it, is probably School of Rock. I play no instruments, I wanna make that very clear. I can't play a kazoo, I have, I have nothing, I can't sing, nothing of that sort. But it's not even a movie about music, is it? It's about fucking passion and about being yourself and owning it and having dreams and shit. And like, is he a criminal? Yes, it's about a criminal. That should probably be in jail for what he did. But that doesn't matter, that's not what we're talking about. It's about loving yourself and doing the shit that you wanna do. And that's why it really spoke to me. I like just blending in gray, black, navy blue, royal blue, something of that nature. I don't, I, I really don't mess with, I, I like watching other people be, you know, vibrant and whatever. But for me personally, black, gray, boring stuff. Don't look at me. <laughs> Who, me? No. Well, yeah, I mean, like right now in my stomach, I feel like my heart might stop. I feel pressure constantly. I feel it all the time. I think everybody does. And I think it's just a matter of how you respond to it. And I think more recently, I've gotten better at letting pressure motivate me instead of shutting me down, which is something that I definitely used to let it do. But why I feel pressure, who it's coming from, I don't know. I pro it's probably mostly self-inflicted. But, you know, que sera sera. <laughs> I don't know, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yes, a lot of pressure. Probably just like thoughtlessness, just thoughtless behavior, you know, people who are inconsiderate. Anything that falls under that, I despise, you know, just like w with the COVID thing, even if you think it's a hoax, whatever, like, I don't care, but just respect people and stay far apart. Stop being a thoughtless Fuck, don't do that. Just think of other people a little bit. Have some consideration. Be a little kind, a little bit. I'm like starting to scream, <laughs> and I'm sorry. But yeah, just thought, thoughtless behavior is what, is what pisses me off. There's gonna be something called coronavirus. <laughs> and uh, throw a, the low point is going to be the end of March. Throw everything into the stock market. Um, no, I, like... I think, I'm having a conversation with myself. That's what this scene is. I think you're doing the right thing. I get that you're scared. I get it. Just keep pushing. Keep trying to better yourself. Keep writing. Keep learning. Just just keep going. Just keep keep on the, the path that you're, 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 you're starting on. Have patience. But I also would tell myself that today. I was understudy on Broadway my senior year of high school in a play called The Winslow Boy. And it was kind of like a star-studded cast if you're a theater weenie. It was like Alessandro Nivola, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, Michael Comstey. It was a cool thing. But the real star of the show was Roger Reese. In the audition, a few times we had to rehearse with him and stuff and just hanging out with him and, and sometimes reading lines. He's probably like the biggest person like he's not like a household name or anything he's not like brad pitt or anything but if you look into him he's like the one of the best shakespearean actors of all time and the thing that kind of just stands out to me is that he was also just the sweetest nicest guy ever and like and the reason i'm speaking he passed away a few years after it i don't know if it was five years ago or whatever uh, uh from cancer and he's like the guy in my life that like if i ever get lucky enough to have the success that he had or anything close to it i just want to be as like he was the type of person if you ever come across that there he was just so filled with kindness that he just fucking he just kept giving kept just like that aura that energy um of just being a really good dude 
and he was so fun to talk to and I, I miss him every day. So he's like the biggest in acting wise and biggest in fame wise statistically and biggest just in like how I view and perceive him. Roger Reese, God rest his soul. I guess like my goat is probably Steve Carell. Ricky Gervais is up there too. Those are, are my goats, but Steve Carell also in terms of just being like a really, really funny, really likable, really good dude. I think Roy Wood Jr. is a criminally, criminally underrated comedian right now. And it's like a shame that people either don't know him or know him as one of the guys on Trevor Noah. Like he's such a fucking funny stand-up guy. That's who just like comes to my head right now. But again, Steve Carell. And then like music wise, I, I like Jonas Brothers and Kelly Clarks. I like catchy shit. <laughs> I was in a car the other day. This is in Hot 97, Funk Master Flex, 10.30 at night, and he was doing his bit on Hot 97. And that dude, like, yes, he plays bangers, he like, but he's just fucking hilarious, too. <laughs> so maybe him, you want to count him as an artist, Funk Master Flex. That's my, that's my answer. Oh, don't listen to me. <laughs> okay, like, actually trying to be helpful. I think that, like, it doesn't matter if you're as talented as the world is you can have all the talent in the world. I get that you're an, in an introvert or whatever. I get that you're whatever. You need to learn how to work with people and how to network and whatever. And it's a part of the business that I, uh, to this day, despise. I actually hate it. I hate, I hate chit chat. I hate networking. It feels opportunistic. It feels gross. Um, but you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work at it. And there are like books and shit that you can read. And you're going to roll your eyes when you hear the titles, but like, yeah, there's, there's, uh, uh, Leon Lowndes, uh, whatever, 46 ways to talk to people, 92 ways to connect to people and whatever the fuck the titles are. I just, just pop them in audiobook. Listen, they're useful tips and tricks and you are not excused from the, like the personal playing favorites parts of the business. You know, it's like, it's just, it's just the way it is and you have to get people to like you. And whether you like it or not, doesn't matter, but it's going to, it, it pays incredible dividends if you just give it a shot and you just work at it. The number one thing is diversity, right? Like that's the, na the main thing that we're facing sort of as a, as, a, as a group, right? And so like, I could, I could try and sort of put my own spin on it and, and give my take, but I think there are people that are far smarter and more articulate than I am that can probably do a way better job of explaining what it is and, and, and what we need to do to fix it. But that's the number one fa problem that we're all facing, right? More nice people for me. I don't know. Everybody's been yelled at by a stage manager. Everybody's had an uncomfortable audition with, you know, somebody, some casting director or whatever. And that sucks. Or some, some actor who thinks his shit don't stink, whatever. Like that's, that's, everybody's had that. And I would, I would like less meanies and more just you know cool laid-back people it's between youtube and twitter i guess if you're going like minutes probably youtube just sheer watching videos and shit but i'm a twitter fiend i'm always on there watching news sports news that's sort of where whatever watching funny videos youtube twitter i'm just like i'm tired bro <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shot. I'm shot, man. I have like a stupid nine to five and they're kind of burning me out and it's leaving me with less time and energy to do things that I actually like doing. And then again, I mentioned like I'm trying to make money so I can move out and whatever and start doing stuff. And you know, I'm vain, so I want more money. So like I do photo gigs on the side and those are starting up again with stuff opening with COVID and everything. So yeah, no, I'm just kind of not leaving enough of myself to yes, do the stuff that I want to do and write and all that jazz, but also just like mental health and just sort of taking time to relax and recharge. Probably not doing a very good job of that. But yeah, no, I'm just, I'm shot. As soon as we get off this interview, I edit another stupid video. But yeah, I'm just tired, bro. First thing I do is quit my job. <laughs> First thing, right? Okay, I would purchase the United States of America. I would purchase the United States of America, and I would name myself Supreme Overlord. And with my still blank check, 
I would fix all the problems. Okay? You haven't thought about it enough. Hear me out. I would fix all of the problems. You're probably in the comments. Oh, you didn't donate to this charity. Oh, what about this? Oh, I didn't do this. You're not listening. I'm Supreme Overlord. I fixed the problem. There are no more problems on planet Earth. I bought the rest of the Earth, too, just with extra money. And everything is okay. I'd fix it. And then on top of that, I would, like, I like, take all necessary steps from going. Because, like, right now, I, I, I look what I look. I look like what I look like. I'm kind of like a uh, whatever, whatever, who cares. I would take all necessary steps to look incredibly wealthy. You know, whether that's fake abs lip filler butt lift what you name it i would i would i would go from looking average to like a rich person just because i can i'm supreme overlord you can't question you can follow me at ryan k quigley that's instagram i don't really post there if you thought anything i said was like mildly funny if you want to watch the movie that i made that short uh, film that i was talking about earlier Go on, you can follow Bellhop Productions, Bellhop Productions, at, yeah, at Bellhop Productions. We have a mini series called Straight White Guilt, which is a little funny. It's a little funny thing. They're all short. You can watch the whole series that we did in 30 minutes. The first one is very bad. The first one's not good at all, but they get pro progressively better, and that's called growth. So I recommend that. And, uh, you know, uh, support Black Wolves if you're not already. Subscribe to this thing. Follow to this, this, this page. That's, that's number one, right? Um, anyway, man, love, peace, soul. Love you. Wow. If this comes out before Election Day, go vote. If it's after, I hope you vote it. Bye-bye.